Louisville, Kentucky. This is the place where Happy Birthday was first sang. Louisville, Kentucky. U of L specifically. I heard it's one of the first hospitals, but I think it just might be the first emergency room and ambulance service. So the first emergency room, first ER, specialized trauma care center, 1911. U of L. So Wildcat fans, I'm going to say U, University of Loserville, right? Louisville, a bunch of Loserville. Anytime you use the ambulance or go to the emergency room, thank U of L for that shit, okay? So y'all want to be dicks about dumb shit? This is important. So U of L developed the first ER, the first emergency room. So you have an accident, one of your children have an accident, you're rushed off to the hospital uh, in an ambulance, and you go into an emergency room. Thank U of L for that, okay? UK, UK fans, U of L, first emergency room. Ambulance services are right there, specialized trauma care center. So you assume emergency room, there's ambulances. But first emergency room, U of L. So, okay, so that's uh, Louisville, Kentucky, first happy birthday was saying. I'm not sure about the cheeseburger thing. Um, I like to mention it because I think it's a good uh, critical thinking exercise. Let's see, we have uh, some other things. The happy birthday to you was sung at the Little Loom House. So Little Loom House, right? Happy birthday to you. The uh, statue, the King Louis statue right next to the Metro City government was almost destroyed by the second French Revolution in 1830, right? Which, well, it might not have been a bad thing because maybe we wouldn't be Louis, you know, carrying on King Louis' fucking legacy. Who the fuck's King Louis? Don't ask anybody from Louisville because they don't fucking know. So, happy birthday to you. The, uh, King Louis statue over the ER. These are just fucking things that you maybe, maybe you didn't know, you know, about Louisville. Neville Miller. Neville Miller, another motherfucking mayor who I'm going to do a little research on. He's known as the Flood Mayor, 1937. You got the flood, the river floods. Neville Miller fucking jumps in, saves everybody, 1937. Um, there's some other interesting things. The United States Marine Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky, considered the best remaining antebellum hospital in the U.S., Basil W. Duke, he was the chief lobbyist for l &N Railroad, probably responsible for the killing of William Justice Goble. Um, but even though he worked for the l &N Railroad during the Civil War, the Fourth American Civil War, um, you know, Lincoln's War, so you have Basil W. Duke tearing l &N Railroads up the whole time during the, the Civil War, and then after he's destroying all these railroads, he becomes the chief lobbyist for it. So talk about loving your master. Talk about loving your oppressor. Sitting there destroying all these railroads and giving them more than neckties when they would bend those rails up and twist them all out of shape. That was known as a Morgan necktie. Basil W. Duke destroying all these railroads, then fucking sucks the railroad company's dick. <laughs> uh, don't fuck with the railroads, right? That's what everybody say. Everybody says. Okay, so that's just some fucking Louisville things. Happy birthday was made here. First emergency room was here. Um, some big ass fucking. This is all about Louisville mayors, but it's Louisville centered, right? So all this matters. Um, um, I'm getting to Paul C. Barth. Okay, Paul C. Barth was a Democrat mayor in Louisville, 1905 to 1907, and he was put in there by the political party boss, Democrat John Whalen. So we're going to get to that in a second. I just want to quickly mention in 1981, um, this is a big, did you know, in 1981, there was a big-ass explosion, a big-ass fucking explosion all over the place um, on February 13th, 1981. So this is nearly one year right before I was born. Louisville sewer explosions were a series of explosions that destroyed more than two miles, three kilometers of streets in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, the blasts were caused by the ignition of hexane vapors, which had been illegally discharged from Ralston's Purina soybean processing plant located near the Lou University of Louisville. The plant located on Floyd Street is recognizable for its large landmark silos visible from the Eastern Parkway and Interstate 
65. So yeah, I see the lar landmark silos. I've seen those motherfuckers. They're right next to like the fucking um, baseball park and all. So they they were illegally putting these hexane vapors out. You know, they were trying to get the I don't know the the oil out of the soil bean or something. I don't know. They was using hexane vapors. It got into the sewage plant and then it fucking caught on fire. There were no fatalities, but they. Uh, Ralston Purina paid $18 million to the Louisville Metropolitan Sewer District and more than 18 point, or $8.9 million to the 16,000 plaintiffs in the lawsuit settled in 1984. The company admitted that it released hexane into the sewers but denied negligence. <laughs> we did it intentionally. We weren't negligent. We put that fucking gas in there. So the event, uh, Ralston Purina plant, the dog food company, right, they use hexane as a solvent to extract oil from soybeans. So they're trying to get oil from soybeans, and they're using hexane in order to do that. They had a containment system designed to recycle used hexane from the process back to the plant. The containment system was not functioning that night. A large quantity, several hundred, several thousand of hexane was released into the sewers. The hexane began to vaporize in the sewers and slowly began to seep out of manholes on the streets at about 5.16 a.m. on Friday, February 13th. So Friday the 13th, explosions ripped through the southern part of old Louisville near, near the University of Louisville. The cause of the explosions were eventually traced to a spark from a car near the intersection of 12, 12th and Hill Street, which ignited the hexane fumes in the sewers. The car was thrown onto the side from the force of the blast and there was extensive damage to area homes, businesses, and streets. Police officers in a police helicopter that happened to be over the area at the time said it looked like a bombing run. Two miles, three kilometers of the main sewer line were completely destroyed in the blast. Water lines were severed, leaving the area residents without water for weeks. And luckily the streets were nearly deserted since it was early in the morning and no fatalities. So... Yeah, a big ass fucking sewer explosion, like two fucking miles of sewer. There's a downtown explosions bring back old memories of old Louisville sewer blast from 1981. So there was actually explosions recently. Two crazy grunt, underground explosions and flying manholes bring back memories three decades ago. So first today, several blasts ripped holes in 7th Street, and now we learn that the mayor's office is flooded. And the, the Courier Journal has a video of one of the blasts, right? So there's, there's some blast that's going on right now in the 7th Street, and then the mayor's office was flooded. Louisville explosions, a series of powerful underground explosions shook downtown Louisville. Cars were sent flying through the air. Parts of buildings collapsed. Streets buckled inward. Manhole covers popped off with deadly velocity. Many people's bathrooms exploded into fountains of sewage. They thought it was an earthquake was going on, end of the world. Saw furious sewage stench fill the air all over town. Raw sewage began to fill some streets three feet high and rising. It's determined that the reason Louisville's sewer lines had exploded because someone had been dumping massive amounts of hexane. Hexane. And that's somehow it turned out to be the Floyd Street, Ralston, Purina plant. Purina recently has decided to uh, merge with Nestle. Purina makes food, pet food, and animal feeds. And so there's going to be a merger with Nestle. Um, so, okay, so Paul C. Barth, right, I'm going on and on about his fucking political boss, and, um, so Paul C. Barth is a mayor of Louisville for two years, from 1905 to 1907, but he was put in there by, um, John Henry Whalen, fucking confederate, fucking corrupt, piece of shit, fucking spoil system, patronage, fucking aristocratic, Corrupt, you know, like I said, he's just a fucking piece of shit. So like, he's um he's a po political boss. He was a Confederate, but that has nothing to do with any of what he actually is. After the Confederacy, after he rode with John Hunt Morgan, killing you know uh, uh, Union members and destroying property and shit, he becomes a political boss in Louisville and he engineers all these different elections. Nobody liked him. Everybody knew he was a corrupt bastard, but it's easier to get fear than it is to get love. And so he was. Um, John Henry Whalen, that's just like Boss Hog from Dukes of Hazard, and then there is um, uh, Boss Tweed out of New York, Boss Tweed, right, these political bosses, these are the owners that's in the back of the scenes fucking wheeling and dealing, and, and he's a corrupt motherfucker, so 
John Henry Whalen is known as the Buckingham boss out of his Buckingham theater. He's sitting in the green room just using every manipulative, shitty fucking tactic in order to win any election that he wants to win. So let's finish up with uh, uh, what it is that he actually does. So he has this scheme in 1892. 1891, we get a brand new constitution, right? Um, that's the Kentucky Constitution. Now, William Henry, or uh, John Henry Whalen, John Henry Whalen, he was convinced his choice for city chancellor would lose in the primary. So as primaries were exempt from most election laws, he was able to convince the party that a house-to-house -house canvas would be superior to any other form of primary election. This had both the effect of disenfranchising thousands of voters who couldn't be at home at the specified times and ensuring that bulk votes were cast the way that they were supposed to be. Ah, oh, that's how fucking um, smooth operator this fucking Buckingham boss is. So he doesn't think the dude's going to fucking win, so he changes the election fucking laws, and instead of going to a voting precinct and casting your ballot, he brings the election people to your house, knocks on the door, says, who the fuck you going to vote for? Now, I paid you your bribe. How come you, you, know what, how come you ain't voting for me like I said you were? So he's able to canvas, gets all these votes, and uh, wind up fucking winning. Uh, it had the effect of disenfranchising everybody that wasn't at home at the time. And it ensured that he could, you know, kind of uh, put pressure on those the people at the door to vote for him. Throughout his career, John Henry Whalen used nearly every method imaginable to manipulate elections. He had police intimidate black voters. So, Confederate, big fucking surprise there. This fucking Catholic Confederate piece of shit. John Henry Whalen fought for the Confederacy, hated black people. Wanted slavery, but it had nothing to do with slavery, right? It had to do with the state's rights. Bullshit. He's fucking racist. He he was a police chief, and now he's, you know, using his police powers, which the Fugitive Slave Act, since George Washington's time, had the police catching the, the, the slaves who had ran away and bring them back. So the police had been against black people's existence from day one, from day one. They didn't care about their freedom, didn't care about their humanness, didn't care about any of that. You were property, and the law is a law. You need to get back in, in line. You know, that's a pig. That's what the cops are all about. That's what they've always been about. So, Whalen successfully executed, oh yeah, the wild scheme. So he was able to in intimidate black voters. Um, he had voting, voting locations in Republican heavy precinct moved at the last moment or colluded to create impossibly long weights on them. So, creating long-ass lines, moving them really far away. Republican, I mean, with these fucking corporate or these uh, uh, corrupt fucking Confederate Democrats, I like to hear these Republicans because that was the party of Lincoln. It was for the uh, Emancipation Pro Proclamation. So, not only is he fucking with the, the whole process with uh, where people could vote, moving them out of the Republican areas, he also hired repeat voters. He would buy the votes. He threatened to take away patronage jobs, um, and he even managed to annul primary election in 1899 when it appeared his candidate was going to lose. He annulled a whole fucking thing. So, no, this whole election is just bullshit. I'm fucking John Henry fucking Whalen. I'm a fucking Catholic Confederate, and I run this shit. I run this whole fucking town. I'm John Henry fucking Whalen, okay? So, John Henry Whalen... Is, uh, is a boss, right? He was able to annul a fucking campaign in 1899. He was able to get P. Booker Reed elected. He was able to get William O. Head elected, John H. Bushmeyer elected. Um, unfortunately, it fucking caught up with him. These people are before and after. So Paul C. Barth is an uh, anomaly in his uh, uh, John Henry Whalen's political boss um, tenure. He was actually probably, like, he was embarrassed about Paul C. Barth, you know? Before Paul C. Barth... He was able to get motherfuckers elected. He has a patronage. He has a boss. He had 1,200 jobs. Here, you want a job? You want a job? Here, everybody gets a fucking job. You vote for me, I'll be your best friend. Throughout his career, John Henry Whalen used every, every fucking thing, right? So even shut the whole fucking thing. How does he do that? I don't know. 1900, uh, he might even be fucking connected. Basil W. Duke, he's fucking connected with the assassination of William Justice Goble. Caleb, um, um... Caleb Powers. Caleb Powers is fucking involved. Caleb Powers is involved. One of the main dudes, but then that Clay County bushwhacker. Uh, fucking bushwhacker from Clay County. Um, Howard. I want to say William Howard. So, 
In 1900, uh, John Henry Whalen's mechanisms was investigated after uh, John, uh, uh, Governor William Justice Goble was assassinated, so they thought it had something to do with him. John Henry Whalen had attempted to bribe a senator to oppose Goble just weeks before the assassination, so he tried to pay somebody to be against William Justice Goble, a senator, so to make sure they didn't vote um, William Goble in, right? He, they, they tried to make it seem like he set the election law and then he was corrupt, but actually he was pure goodness in a whole fucking world of corruption, and that's why they fucked with him.